Hello and welcome to Conversations with T. Adi Yamon. We are at the prestigious Arts Gallery of Alberta and I've got an amazing artist who is exhibiting here tonight. Hello to Hello. Conversations. Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, we were just speaking before mm -hmm. um, we came online. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, my name is Curtis Talway Santiago. That's an ancestral nickname okay, because because all the Santiago's would have a tall way. So in Trinidad, they would say it's tall way, so that would be my father. Uh, and so I'm originally from Edmonton. I grew up here. Your father is from Trinidad. Both my mom and dad are from Trinidad, and they came over in 1967. And uh, and then I was raised here, and this is my first time back in Edmonton in almost eight nine years. Oh wow, what did you miss about Edmonton? My friends and family, my people. Tell us where you've been in the... In, in, in the meantime, Africa, I've, yeah. been, I've lived in uh, Toronto, New York, Portugal, South Africa. Uh, you've had now, the best life. And now, I live in, and now I live in Germany, in Munich. How is Germany like? Are they, are they nice to you there? They are nice to me there, and what's nice is that I have a little son who's there and so it is a beautiful place to raise a baby because there's parks everywhere and it's peaceful. And yeah. So we're at the Arts Gallery. What does tonight mean to you? As you, we were talking earlier, it's like a homecoming. Oh. Um, I grew up in school coming to the museum and uh, I've always been a big dreamer. And so I've always said to myself, one day I'm going to have artwork here. And I remember the first piece I saw here was of my favorite hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, done by Andy Warhol. Oh. And so that was a no Oilers. exactly yes. it's <laughs> also see, I'm back in town and the Oilers because when I lived Did here they were the match yesterday oh you came in today no so no I've been here I, I watched from a restaurant and listened to it from my hotel fair enough, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. okay so so this is more of an homecoming for you yes tell us what people will be seeing and how long the exhibition is for they'll be seeing the exhibition is up until August yeah. and what they'll be seeing is uh, my, my, rec my, my interpretation of my parents' memories. The idea is that I'm a child of the diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora, and all my friends' parents came here around the same time, and now they're all the same age. And some of them have Alzheimer's and dementia, and they're passing, and so I wanted to make art that would speak to their story and the culture and heritage that was, was, was brought to Alberta with the Caribbean folks that came. And so these are depicting, a lot of it is depicting uh, 1950s carnival, which holds a lot of significance for my parents. I've heard a lot about Caribbean festivals, as you would know, then mm -hmm. come August. Yeah. They had a pre-party uh, pre for the... Uh, Kerry West? Yes, yes, it was crazy. Well, so uh, I, it my just, family, we, it burned me. It was so crazy. We've been there Beautiful. since the first Kerry West. Oh, really? We are, like, we've been involved. My mom used to cook food in, all, in uh, Churchill yeah, Square. Yeah. And uh, uh, the person who's going to be playing Steel Man, yeah. her father was the one who created the first Steel Man in, in, in Edmonton. Oh, wow. And uh, people I ran into so you today. you Edmonton culture? I do. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, tell me. In Pay the Devil, Brian Brian. Yeah. What sort of name is that for an homecoming exhibition? So the Jab Jab. <laughs> so the Jab Jab is a significant character in, a, in, 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 in Trinidadian old time yes. carnival. It, in the first time, it was a depiction the slaves, when they were able to participate in carnival, which was brought from the Europeans, they played the role of Jab Jab as a mirror to show their oppressors yeah. how nasty they thought they were. And so they covered themselves and would act terrible. But then they began, but also they were able to embed their religion and their spiritual beliefs. So I won't say religion, spiritual beliefs from the different places in Africa that they came from. So in Senegal, they have a character called the Conqueror. And I was able to see one of the rituals. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is like the Jab Jab. And so lots of the characters, they have triple quadruple meanings where on the surface you read them as one thing but it was these people who were held and holding on to their beliefs and could hide them mm. and so that is where what i wanted to and so pay the devil initially you think the devil is a terrible thing and in this case my first time in trinidad was being chased around the street by the jab jab and then yelling pay the devil brown brown pay the devil and i'm i'm a kid i'm scared and i'm running from them but there was also this excitement like, oh my god, what is this? And so, yeah. Right now, I feel like I'm alive, and it's just hearing you talking, just feeling your heart, and 
I want you to tell me what uh, this is Elitis where the Alberta Gallery. How how come how did you get here? I used to think it was just rich people that would exhibit. Maybe you're yeah. rich, but yeah, maybe you're my brother. How did you what can I do to exhibit? How can I get my children to exhibit you? Well, I just so let's say for your child <laughs> to do what my parents did. <laughs> to do what my parents did. You get my question, yes, yes. my brother. This will more people. The <laughs> belief that you can and you deserve to be in any uh, space. How did they find you, though? Did you find? I've them been making you? no. I've been making art and putting my art out into the world for years. When no one would listen, I was still putting my art out there. And that's. Uh, I'm not. I didn't come through university into art. I'm primarily self-taught. But I had something special that caught on, and I just kept pushing. When they'd say no, I would say yes, and I would keep going until I reach at a place where I never envisioned that my painting would sell for this much or that much. But now I'm here and opening the door for others because it was open for me. And there's a rich history of art by by the diaspora, and this is it's, it's time. We take the New York and in Hong Kong as well mm -hmm. because this is home, Edmonton. Yeah. Is this the best place you've exhibited? Yes, because I when I we were downstairs listening to. Uh, Welcome to another episode of Conversations with T. We are the posh and prestigious at Gallery of Alberta and I'm quite beside myself tonight because of all the sights and all the sounds. With me here is a Montreal artist, uh, Manuel Mathieu. Hello, welcome to Conversations. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. Yes, I, like I said, this world is your world. Tell us what, why we're here tonight. Well, we're here to celebrate uh, an exhibition that I started in uh, 2020 at the Power Plant. And this exhibition is circulating. And it's a combination of work that I've done in the last 10 years. Uh, this work talks about Haiti, it talks about some personal experiences, and that talks about my identity as a Haitian man navigating the world. Well, let's talk about your identity as yeah. an Asian man navigating the world, because you're also from Montreal. Yeah, I, I, should, I left Haiti, I was 19 years old, and uh, after that I went to Montreal, but I've been traveling a lot, I've studied abroad, and things like that, so um, I think I would say I'm a citizen of the world. I like that. So tonight's celebration is not new for you, because you've exhibited in so many places around the world. Well, every show is special. You know, I get to meet people like you, and I get to, uh, to see the work in a different setup. That's very important to me. To have this painting like that, um, you know, with the, with the space to back, to back up and to actually see the, the, the aura of the piece, that's very important to me. What are you trying to say with this piece, for example? Well, this piece, it's a combination of two pieces. On the right you have, a, it's like a figure holding another figure, it's titled One Future. And you have on the left, uh, it's called Invisible Wall in reference to, uh, to the invisible wall that is in front of the sea when you're growing up in the Caribbean, on an island. You cannot really leave the island swimming. The, um, the sea becomes like an invisible wall where your dreams uh, go to die. You are still attached to Haiti and you should be. Well, you describe this as immersive. Does it immerse you in your home culture? and your Canadian culture or your world culture? Well, there's a combination of both. I think I am, I am myself. Um, it's not the world that, I, that I'm immersed by. I immerse the world, you know? Tell me about that. I embrace um, the complexity that comes with. There, there are a lot of challenges for BIPOC artists or black artists. Yeah. Do you know experience that when you say I immerse the world? Well, I do. I do. I think it's uh, every Is this day. what you've learned to be because your world must be challenging, yeah. delivering your hearts to people, making people like what you do can be easy? Well, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, don't I don't try to make people like what I do. I just do what I do and right. the right people follow. You know, I'm not trying to sure. convince or, or seduce anybody. I think the right people. They I kind of seduce. It's from Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> the right, the right people actually, you know, they connect with the work and they, they keep they keep following it. I think that's what matters to me at that point. Right. Seduce so us with that photo, for example. What's going on there? Uh, the it's all on common ground. Uh, I 
I was interested about the land in that piece. The land? Yeah, the land. Like the land that we, uh, we march on. You know, there's, there's something, the bottom is, yeah. it seems like there's a reference to some small yeah. islands. Okay. Me coming from an island, there's some references to that also. And I don't know, there's something, there's a direct reference to the land for me in this, in this piece. Were your parents very rich when you were growing up? How did you become an artist? Uh, well, I think you have to define what rich means, right? Uh, because technically, what I considered my family was rich because they, they created a space for me to, to grow in a healthy way. Uh, I mean, mentally and spiritually. I think for me that's a, that's a richness. I think everybody who has that actually is, should be grateful. But I'm grateful for that um, for that reality. Uh, on the other hand, my father and my mother they come from middle class background, right. so they were people uh, have degrees and education was really important to them. And that's why they were very happy when I decided to to pursue my studies in art. Uh, I did a bachelor and I did a master later on. I think that's sick give them a sense of security even though you don't have to study art to to build a certain language uh, and have a certain language language mature, maturity maturity in your, in your language how would you want people to remember your art by my god i'm 35 i'm not thinking about how well, i would like people know, to remember my <laughs> i mean right now i just want to live you know? You're from Montreal as well. You want to seduce the world, immerse no, in the world. I don't. I mean, it's not because I'm. You know, it's not because I'm from Montreal. Actually, I'm the idea is, you. Uh, I just want to be fully BYM. You know, and that's from Montreal. That's from Haiti. That's from you know the different places I've been, and um, you know, bring my understanding of the world, share it with, with people around me, and. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to show it in an event where, you know, where it's very different from my reality. But then we can start these conversations. How is it different from the reality? Well, uh, I grew up in Haiti. First of all, it's not it's not the same historical context, economical context, social context, um, and it's my first time being in an event. Is it your first time yeah. at this gallery? Ever. Oh, wow. It's the first time walking oh, in at Edmonton. I, I read this morning. So it's oh, well, actually. Congratulations. This is a big deal. Well, you won the 2020 Sylvia Award, Sylvia Art Award. Yeah. Oh, okay. So big, big thing to have kind of, for your brother. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to be. I mean, what I'm excited about is to come into the city with my work, you know, because there's one thing for people to get to know me as a person, but then when you experiencing the work, you're exposed to another layer of who I am. And that's what I'm interested in because, like you said, that's what's going to stay. You know, me, yeah, I'm just like everybody else fading away. Mm, I don't know about fading away, but I need to ask, how, how did the art gallery find you? Or did you find them? Oh, what it's, a, to it's a touring show, meaning that it started at the power plant and okay. the show is now traveling. It went to Winnipeg. It's here now, and it's up two, uh, two or three other stops before stopping. So, okay. but it's, it was initiated by a by a museum and gallery space, uh, not a gallery space, but an institution in Toronto. Okay. Um, how do we get our own children? I don't know if you have kids already. No, I don't. Yeah. Yes, but how do we get more BIPOC children to to become like you, to immerse like you, to do art like you? You know? Well, they, first of all, they have to come to see shows. Right. That's the first stop, right. you know, and not right. only my show. Right. They have to familiarize themselves with art in general. Yeah. Uh, that is the starting point. That's what, that was my starting point. You, you used know? to visit galleries and stuff. Yeah, I used to, to. I had a mentor who gave me books, and I was, at the time, I got more and more intrigued, and I decided that, you know, this is something that I want right. to, I want to dive into more seriously. But I think, you know, you know, eating comes with appetite. So um, the more you actually eat, the more appetite you get. You know? Your background does affect a lot of your art. What, what would you say? What good has come out of um, has come out 
to Haiti, what, what good would you say your art has meant to, to where you're from, for example? Well, I think to be able to put forward my vision of the world is very sacred to me and to my people because that's a reality that, uh, that people are not necessarily exposed to. I mean, people in Edmonton might not even know where Haiti is. But now to be here and to be able to see an artist working like that with such complex ideas and such complex realities, it's something that is significant not just for Haitians but for, for people in general. It's really important to me. So in one word, which adjective would you say your art has focused on to bring healing to your homeland? Openness. Ah, why openness? Because um, I think the, the violence and the frictions that we're seeing today is a lot tied to ignorance and fear, and a, lack of, a lack of openness to the other. So I think, um, you know, I hope a show like that can create new bridges for people to see each other differently and eventually start conversations and be more curious about our different histories and legacies. Where do you see yourself in the next decade? At 35, you already have Gallery of Alberta. Where do you see yourself in the next decade? Well, I'm ready in a space where I'm very grateful to be able to show my work. So what I want to do is to keep, keep on showing, keep on making work, keep on growing, and, you, know, and, you know, keep evolving. <laughs> and just be able to share the work, that's, that's a big... Uh, it's a big statement for me. It's a big, you know, I feel very grateful to be able to do that. So if I can keep doing it and keep making the work and, and you know, evolve, that's, that's, if that's my life, then I'm good. I'm happy, you know. We wish, you, we wish you all the best, Manuel. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for you your for, time uh, today. For, oh my God.